Cat, it's Maximus here. I think this is going to finish out my fan videos for a while. I was going to do a focus on like Nidec and Delta, but I think I've actually talked about those fan brands and given quite a few demonstrations of high performance fans. I'm finishing it out with AC fans, or these would be electronic and not so much computer fans. These are the types of fans that would really be used more industrially. Uh, anything from copying machines to uh, PLC controls. There's all sorts of computer type controls called programmable logic controllers used industrially in all manufacturing plants. Um, and many of them have motor controllers, v v VFDs, and they're in big housings. And many times they'll actually use these fans as opposed to uh, DC fans. Just for simplicity, these types of fans also tend to be a little bit more reliable in the long term. But just don't have as much power. Don't move, cannot move as much flow. How you know you have a little AC fan is real simple. There's no cogging. When you spin the fans, they just continue to spin and spin. Besides, of course, the nameplate on the back. Any kind of a DC fan like this looks real similar to the AC fans. This is indeed a brushless DC fan. And how he really knows when we turn the fan blades, there's a permanent magnet in there. And so it wants to do what's known as cogging. As it gets around each one of those poles in the motor, it kind of wants to stop there. These types of fans, these hundred, these are all going to be 110 volt or 120 volt, but of course they make them in 220 volt. They all tend to have metal housings um, for just for compliance, additional safety compliance when it is a higher voltage. I believe they do make plastic housing versions of these 120 volt AC fans, uh, but I personally never seen them. They always seem to be in a metal housing. We have like an NMB boxer. Many of these fans are actually super quiet. This NMB right here, I think only moves, it's a 120 millimeter fan, but it only moves about 50 cubic feet of air a minute. And I say only because I've demonstrated, you know, some of those high power deltas, which will move five times as much air, 250 cubic feet of air a minute. This thing, um, you could, three feet away of it just sitting there, and you would have a real hard time hearing it. These types of fans also tend to have extremely high mean time between failures because they have larger ball bearings and they run at lower RPMs. And they're all kind of designed to be in an install and kind of forget so I've seen these fans have uh, MTBS anywhere from 100,000 hours all the way up to like 180,000 hours. Just huge lifespans. But they come in all the usual suspect sizes from 80 millimeter, 120 millimeter. These are 172 by 150 millimeter fans. And uh, this kind of tends to be the size range. They don't make tiny ones because, of course, the issue with uh, an AC motor... And like, this would be a great example. This is a pretty big uh, 80 millimeter fan. We've seen ones that can move huge amounts of air, but this thing's only, you know, six watts, or excuse me, five watts at 60 hertz. Um, and 110 volts, that's just very, very low amount of power. So a small one like this might only be a 20 CFM fan, but it would be pretty darn quiet and just last forever. The issue is with an AC induction motor, you cannot get the power density that you can with a DC brushless motor. Why? Because on a DC fan, the part of the fan that spins has a big permanent magnet. So that provides one half of uh, the magnetic field uh, for a motor to turn because you have to have one, two fields. One to push, they have to push against each other for a motor to turn. And so on a brushless DC fan, they have a big ring permanent magnet in there, and then they can run a bunch of coil through the electromagnets in the middle to get it to spin. They can de deliver lots of power. Of course, you know, we have things like drones, which are the same types of motors that can fly. These are AC induction motors. Since they're running off of alternating current, one, they don't have any of the electronics that are associated with DC fans, I should mention. So electronically, they are more reliable because it's just an AC motor with a thermal cutoff in it in case there's a short or it just gets way too hot for one reason or another. Which means that this spinning part right here is actually a, a bunch of laminated layers of steel. And as the coil, which is what, since they're still brushless, the coil is going up and down with the 60 hertz AC wave, and that is inducing, kind of like a transformer, a counteracting magnetic field in the actual rotor part. And that induced ma counteracting magnetic field 
is what causes the rotor to spin. Unfortunately, that action is quite weak on the smaller sizes, and you'll notice on this table that all these fans all have hub motors that are get to about a minimum size. On these 80 millimeter fans, it's a big old motor with just a little bit of blades, where it only increases slides slightly when you get to the 120s or these 150 millimeter fans, because as the, you get more and more physical size, uh, the efficiency and amount of power you can deliver goes up proportionately as well. And it's one of the reasons that you don't actually see bigger fans in brushless DCs because the electronics are too expensive and the advantages of power density aren't required because now you have a big old fan, you can put a big old motor in there and it makes very little difference in like the amount of area that's blocking. People don't specify fans for how much they weigh. All these fans are really heavy because they have laminated iron uh, both on the moving part as well as the stationary part. And the other thing I'm going to mention is brands like, you know, it seems that the NMB is the only one company that really has a big market in both these hundred, these AC as well as DC brushless fans. Otherwise, it just seems to be uh, all sorts of random different brands, um, all quite different from any of the brands that I'm used to on the DC fan uh, side. All these are like inner fans, PAPS. There's another inner fan, uh, you know, this one's uh, an Orion fan, which I think did make some DC fans. This is another inner fan. The last thing I'll mention is that there is a standard with these. Some of these, as we can see here, just have wires and you just, you know, connect them up to a, you know, a good old power cord and give them a run. But many have a standardized type of connector and there are two. There are these two prong like this and then I have one down here. Then there are the wide flat ones, but it's kind of neat that they actually have a standard and they do indeed make power cords for these just like this, which have little plugs that can snap right in there. So this fan I'm holding is actually a 40 watt fan, so it would be a little bit more considered more powerful. Let's give it a run here and then I'll finish out this video. Just to give you an idea how much noise even a big 172 by 150 millimeter fan will make. Let's see if I can't get this held so one like this might move 100 CFM as we can hear it was not tremendously loud let me slow that down and you know kind of like a bathroom fan only even this would be twice as much airflow and so these are really great if you have a shop or a shed or a garage that you know in the summer gets super hot and you just want to a ventilation fan these are in these type of computer and electronic fans are a great option just because they're simple they run off 120 volts ac all i have to do is screw put a hole in the wall maybe put some louvers on get a screen for it and then connect it up to a light switch you don't need to get special power bricks and you don't have to worry about jet engine loud fans unless you really want those and so that's why i collect these because they are actually more practical in many situations like, you know, a, a garage ventilation or a shop ventilation fan. These you can really install them and, and these will essentially last a lifetime. And of course, they make them in different thicknesses since they all essentially can uh, only run at a certain RPM due to the 60 hertz AC. And being brushless, they just increase the thicknesses like, say, this one just to give you more and more airflow. I'm going to give this other ugly one. This thing was like a dollar, but I did pick it up. Uh, it has some pretty interesting experimentation on the blades. It has like these little notches in the leading edge and then like these little teeth on the back edge. I believe that's the, uh, you know, they're all mitigation for sound. And uh, these all these fans we can see have some interesting blade shapes, whether they're super rounded or have these interesting notches. These are pretty rounded. All because these are designed to be pretty quiet. So that one's definitely noisier than the previous fan, but it certainly felt like it had a bit more power. Anyway, the last thing I should mention is not only has a special, they have like little uh, daisy chain power cables like this, so you can actually connect two of them together and run them all off the same power cord. I'm going to give one of these little small ones that I paid too much money for a long time ago 
a little run just so you can see what a or hear what a little small one of these little AC electronic fans sounds like. Maybe about 30 cubic feet of air a minute. It's really not particularly great out of one of these. But just like a normal, quiet, but yet effective fan. So that's the whole point of these AC electronic fans is just for simplicity and ultimately in many guards you could say reliability because these things are, since they're induction, literally have two ball bearings and no other electronics except for a thermal cutoff switch. They're super simple. If they fail, it's either going to be bearings or because they were hit by a surge and it actually melted down and fried the windings in the motor. And I should note, none of these are actually like what they use, say, in a bathroom fan. Bathroom fans use really just terrible, like, you know, your kitchen ventilation fans. They use the world's worst quality motors. If you put one of these fans in a kitchen fan, it would last a hundred years. I mean, no joke. When you talk about 100,000 hours of uh, continuous runtime, and in a situation where they're run intermittently, that's kind of the other reason you use these. If you're they're in an intermittent run situation, uh, it, they really are. And install it and just never worry about it again unless, you know, occasionally check to make sure it isn't clogged with stuff. Anyway, that was kind of finishing up my fan reviews. I wanted to talk about this other kind of less sung heroes of the small uh, box fans. The infamous... AC electronic box fan. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.